Hello students of science. In this video we're going to talk about aqueous solutions and pH, a way of calculating whether or not something is an acid or a base. All right, let's talk about water and self-ionization. Pure water, as we've talked about before, is actually a very poor electrolyte. You put two electrodes in water, they're actually not going to light up that light very well, contrary to what Hollywood would lead you to believe with every movie involving electrocution. Water itself does not ionize very well. However, it will undergo a small amount of self-ionization, and it will produce both hydronium and hydroxide ions. So here's my two water molecules from the wheat-hydrogen bond. They are going to slightly ionize. One of those protons is going to be transferred from one water molecule to the other. So we're going to have a hydronium cation and a hydroxide anion. So water plus water is going to slightly dissociate, and this is a batch and forth reaction to form the hydronium cation and the hydroxide anion. Again, same idea right here. And this is a reverse reaction. It's going to bounce between these quite a bit. The concentration of those in pure water is each going to be about 1.0 times 10 to the negative seventh moles per liter. And that's not a very high concentration, but in pure water they are both going to be even with that. Now some notation for how we're going to be doing stuff for the rest of the year. Brackets always indicate the concentration of a substance. So what I'm talking about right here when I have brackets around this hydronium cation, that's really saying the concentration of the hydronium is going to be 1.0 times 10 to the negative seventh molar. The concentration of the hydroxide anion is going to be 1.0 times 10 to the negative seventh molar. So anytime you see brackets, that is going to indicate concentration. You're going to see that a lot. The product of my hydronium cation and the hydroxide anion is always going to remain constant. If I'm going to take these two and multiply them by each other, remember in pure water it's going to be 1.0 times 10 to the negative seventh for either one of them. If you multiply those together, it's always going to be 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th. This number here is a constant. It's not going to change. If the concentration of the hydronium were to go up, this number here would go down. If this one were to go up, that one would go down. But the product of it will remain constant. So we call this the ionization constant of water. So water, whenever it's going to ionize, this is going to be a perfect relationship, where when this one goes up, it's going to be at a cost because this one is going to go down, and vice versa. So that number, 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th, you're going to see that a lot, that is going to be your ionization constant. So let's talk about neutrality when it comes to acids and bases. In pure water, those concentrations are going to be even. We would say that that is going to be neutral. So a neutral, get it, it's a geopolitical joke there, a neutral solution is where you're going to have equal hydronium and hydroxide concentrations. Acids, however, things are going to be different. Acids are going to increase that hydronium concentration. If that concentration is anything higher than 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7th, so anything greater than neutral, we would say that that is going to be an acid. Example, if I have 1.0 times 10 to the negative 5th molar hydronium at 25 degrees Celsius, we would say that's acidic because 1 times 10 to the negative 5th is a larger number than 1 times 10 to the negative 7th by a factor of 100. So anytime that's larger than that, it's going to be acidic. Bases, of course, pretty basic stuff. Bases are going to increase the hydroxide concentration. So anytime it's greater than 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7th, anytime we would say that hydroxide concentration is greater than neutral, we're going to have a base. Example, 1 times 10 to the negative 4th molar hydroxide at 25 degrees Celsius, we would say that is basic because that is going to be greater than 1 times 10 to the negative 7th. All right, so here's how we calculate them. And don't copy this down. You'll have lots of opportunity to work on this. I just kind of walked you through this. So the product of those is always going to be 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. So if I have 0 0.01 molar sodium hydroxide, that's 1 times 10 to the negative 7th, if we're doing the math, that's going to completely dissociate in water to form 1 times 10 to the negative 7th molar hydroxide, because it's going to completely dissociate, so the concentration of sodium hydroxide will be the concentration of hydroxide. 1 times 10 to the negative second, or 0 0.01, is going to be a greater number than 1 times 10 to the negative 7th, 1.0001 molar hydroxide. So we would say the solution is basic. Now, to figure out the hydroxide concentration, remember the product of this, of hydronium times hydroxide is always going to be equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. So the product of those two is going to be equal to that. So to solve for the other one, I'm just going to take that. That's going to be 1 times 10 to the negative 14th divided by 1 times 10 to the negative second. That's going to work out to be 1 times 10 to the negative 12th, and that's a really long number there. Hard to write out, and you'll see why we're not going to be writing this in a minute. Another example, 0 0.0002 molar 
hydrochloric acid, so that's 2 times 10 to the negative fourth, completely dissociates in water, because it's a strong acid, that's going to make 2 times 10 to the negative fourth molar hydroniums. That number is going to be greater than 1 times 10 to the negative seventh, which is what the concentration is at neutral, so we would say that solution is acidic. So, to solve for that, remember the product of this times the hydroxide is going to be 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. So, solving for that, taking this number here, dividing it by 2 times 10 to the negative 4th, is going to give me a hydroxide concentration of 5 times 10 to the negative 10th. Oh, now, you're going to understand why pH and pOH are so much better to work with, because you don't have to deal with those long numbers. Those values can be really small and cumbersome to work with. Don't write these down here. Again, don't copy the slide down. This number here, 1.5 times 10 to the negative 10th molar hydronium, that's really hard to write. Or point that out, all those zeros there, 3.14 times 10 to the negative 13th, those are very hard to write. These are cumbersome to work with. pH and pOH are so much easier. They are going to get rid of all those zeros right, we have right here and replace it by using the negative logarithm. pH, and we'll, we'll write this in a moment, is the negative log of the hydronium. And to solve backward, to solve for the hydronium from the pH, 10 to the negative pH there. So this very long complicated number here becomes a pH of 9.83. Oh hey, I can work with that number. That number is easy to work with. I know that 9.83, that's going to be slightly basic there. Hey, that's so much better than all those zeros there. So to do another calculation, to do 10 to the negative 5.6, so we were to try to figure out the concentration from a pH there, that's going to be this really long number there, 0 0.00002511888 molar. pH, so much easier. pOH, same idea here. Negative logarithm of the concentration there, and here's how I can solve backward. So this very long complicated number we had up there, that's going to work out to be a pOH of 12 and a half. Hey, I can work with that number there. Or another one here, 10 to the negative 6.5, that's going to work out be 0 0.0000316. pH and pOH, so much easier to work with here. And my super complicated ionization constant, 1 times 10 to the negative 14th, well, hey, that one becomes 14.0 when I do the negative log of it. pH plus pOH is going to be 14.0. So right here where I had a pH of 9.83, the pOH is 14 minus that number giving me 4.17. This one, the pOH was 12 and a half. 14 minus 12 and a half is going to give me 1.5. We're going to do some more practice on those later. Here's what I want you guys to copy down. The ionization constant of water, that's going to be the product of the hydroxide times the hydronium, that's going to be 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. If I want to solve for the concentration of the hydronium, that's going to be 10 to the negative pH. If I want to solve for the concentration of hydroxide, that's going to be 10 to the negative pOH. To get backward, to get to the pH, the way easier number to work with, that's the negative logarithm of this number here, the concentration of hydronium. pOH is going to be the negative logarithm of the hydroxide, this number right there. And pH plus pOH is always going to equal 14.0. This is what you need to know. This is what we're going to be practicing. This is what we're going to be calculating.